<laughs> Listen here, girl. I know you think it's a game, but it is absolutely not. Okay, this is the energy supplement from Just Move Supplements. That's right. It's damn near all gone, girl. And that's because I had to get that energy up so I can complete the workout. So I can give y'all this body, this transformation. Get into it. Okay? And I'm done working out now. So that's why we're moving on to the protein shake. Oh, yes. It's already in there, girl. It's already made right here. This is the mixture of the banana pudding, the chocolate cake, and the buttercream cupcake. And you really want to be fancy, you can go ahead and add that blueberry muffin if that's what you want to do, girl. But for me, it's these three right here. Okay? You put that with some almond milk. You mix it all up in honey. Okay? Your muscles have gained life new energy agility get into it okay just move supplements thank you very much hold up chief okay don't forget about that tlc nutri burst to get that multivitamin product because we all need a little extra and child if you want that sea moss that go down smooth don't come up rough okay get into the tlc nautica sea moss yes get that for me and child if your stomach hurt and you need to move some things around so you can be free okay go ahead and get that ISO T down below in the description box. Get it all from me. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Not come on in. Not come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm back. I'm in this thing. What's going down, girl? What's going on? All right. Before we get into Mary to Medicine, a little bit of Real Housewives of Potomac, and all that went down on Twitter between Heavenly and Sweet Tea, I want to remind everybody to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you have not. All right. These glasses are from Fermo. The link is down below in the description box. Matter of fact, y'all have been obsessed with these because it makes me look like that, that one filter from Instagram. <laughs> um, I'm blind. I, I don't pretend to not be blind. Like I, I, I like glasses. Like it's a thing for me. Um, so, you know, for everybody that's questioning what's happening here, um, you know, I guess I guess you get made fun of sometimes when you can't see. Okay, so I I don't know if you guys had a chance to check it out, but y'all know I did another. Now that we're grown, right? Y'all asked, y'all asked, y'all asked, and I gave y'all another. Now that we're grown. This is so cute. That gold on the on the on the back. Do y'all see that? The gold on the back of the glasses. Okay, bro. Blind <laughs> blind is goddamn back. Blind as an old feral cat. Just blind as she want to be. All right? I'm not upset about it either. I'm not. A little bit. A little bit. But stylistically, girl, I do my thing. Yes, dig if you will a picture of you and I engaged in a kiss. Make sure y'all go and check out the Purple Rain now that we're grown. It was a really good conversation. I enjoyed myself with that one. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Those of y'all that came through, thank you. Okay, Hot Wings Lover for pointing that out to everybody. Okay, I appreciate you. Hey, Kiani, Kiani Davis. Thank you so much for becoming a member, love. I like your name. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now we're here for Mary to the Medicine, but we're gonna, we're gonna, let's just, you know, cause I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I did not watch Housewives of Potomac. Let me. See watch Real Housewives of Potomac girl because I put it on to watch Married to Medicine because I was watching something else I can't remember what I was binge watching but I was watching something else okay and so I decided to click on over to my cable so I can see what was going on with the married and the medicine right and I saw the last 30 60 seconds of this episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. And I was reminded why I don't watch this shit. Oh, yes. It only took Robin three seconds of being on screen for me to know that I did not need to watch the rest of this episode. 
facial expressions, Robin. Facial expressions, Robin. Girl, the way you and Giselle make facial expressions and giggle and cackle and act like two mean teenage girls. The way y'all do that all the goddamn time and you got the nerve, the gall, you think you got the rights to be checking somebody about their motherfucking facial expressions? Get out of here. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the show. I don't want to, I, I, I don't care. But I did see Mia talking about that. She had an inheritance when she got with the old man who was married before she got with him. Oh, you had an inheritance. This is why, this is why I can't, I haven't been able to really deal with Real Housewives with Tommy since, since Mia got there. Because the lies are just allowed. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she's just a liar for no reason. I don't know if y'all remember, but the, the lady lied so much her first season, she forgot which lie she told. And so we were always able to go back and clock when she lied because she would then contradict herself later on. The lady is a goddamn liar. She don't tell the truth because it ain't in her. The truth ain't in her and you can't believe nothing that she say. Okay? Don't and she say, y'all, inheritance, working at the damn strip club, serving steak and lobster, swapping dick with your homegirl. Yeah, you had an inheritance. How much? How much? What, 8000 Something that could buy you some little cute shit for your apartment? What? Because the damn show wasn't enough to keep your ass up out the strip club uh, uh, serving coochie with, with a side of steak and lobster because you, you married Gordon's ass up out that same strip club. Correct? <laughs> Correct? Oh, you were stripping for fun. That's what the girls was doing in the 2000s. They were stripping for fun. They were stripping for fun. I need to know the decade that you were stripping in, Mia, because if it was after... 2010, you may not have been making no money like that. I don't know if y'all know, but it became harder and harder and harder for the girl for the girls to make that same early 2000s money. 07 niggas come in the club and throw their whole paycheck, and they paycheck about 10 G's. They just throw the shit in the air. Bitches swimming in money. Is that what's going on when you was in the strip club? Let us know, Mia. We need to know. Ja Rule, get on the line. Let us know. Do you remember this bitch in the strip club? We know you was out there living it up. We need Ja Rule. I need him to make sense of all of this. <laughs> oh, y'all, no matter how hard I try, I still love Dave Chappelle. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, move on. Because I ain't got nothing else to say about these hoes. These hoes, these hoes. Lady. Okay, so Mia met him in 03, but Mary. Okay, so she was in the strip club during the time that they was throwing money in the air. And it was a lifestyle to be lived. A time to be alive. You know? Back when, you know, right before Black China became the most famous stripper you'd ever met. <laughs> okay? Back in the day. So, y'all. Married to the Medicine. You know, Married to Medicine started off with a conversation. And it was a conversation amongst Alicia and the ladies. And they were asking her, where did that $150,000 that Kemma mentioned last night go? <laughs> Where'd it go, girl? <laughs> she blames it on the kids. That's what y'all do. Y'all have children so y'all can blame everything on them. We know. We know. We don't believe you. Heavenly thinks that Kima took the money to go and get his, 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 his you know, his Peter Wacker wet, okay? 
<laughs> Shout out to Priscilla for throwing that one back out there. Big Peter Wack, I heard that shit and I don't know how long. <laughs> okay, but I'm trying to keep from cussing. So the Peter Wacker was getting wet. I don't think that Kemma is paying girls to do that, but I do know that when men don't want their wives to do certain things, they go and find other women to do those nasty things with. Whether he's paying for it or not, I don't know. Then she says, Damon and Kima think the same about a man being a woman's king. So, Heavenly lies to him so they don't have to argue. Then Jackie proceeds to tell her to pay somebody, you know, her and Heavenly, pay somebody, do the things that you don't want to do. And if he got a problem with you paying for people to do it, Pay him when he got home. Jackie said, order food and put it in the containers like you cooked it. Let me tell y'all something. Old women give the worst advice when it comes to men. And I don't think they mean to. I just think they're so caught up. And what they've been told and how stupid they have to pretend to be all the time. They get so caught up in feeling like it's worth it. They actually miss how tiring it is. Like, like they just ignore how exhausting it is to constantly have to lie, pretend to be dumb, go into the higher register of your voice. You know, just so many, like so many stupid ass things tiring yourself out so that this man child won't temper tantrum so he can continue to believe that he's a king and his wife is some superhuman working, cooking, Peter Wacker wetting woman. That has all of the energy and the time to do those things, keep herself up and have children. It is an unrealistic way of being. Women cannot hold that up. Nobody can hold that up. So men who feel this way eventually have to either get divorced or they have to like, let go of how they feel about certain things. For instance, I'm sure Damon used to feel like he didn't want anybody in the house watching his kids or, or cooking and cleaning and all of that. And I bet you any money when his ass was at work for long extended periods of time, Heavenly was calling the cleaning company to come in and clean that goddamn house because she wasn't about to do it. And we know she don't cook like that. Now he understands that. But early on, she exhausted herself, probably trying to accomplish all of these things to keep him. Only for him to do some shit along the way that made her feel like, I know I ain't doing all of this and you out here playing in my face. Because I do believe that Heavenly and Damon have gone through some things. They just don't ever want to talk about it because they don't ever want anybody to be able to throw anything in their faces about their relationship. That's fine. Heavenly is going to work for that check in other ways. But the advice that they are giving Alicia is so terrible to me. And it just reminds me of how women are delusional, women are really like insane, and they become so gung-ho about the dumbest things when it pertains to men. And I remember, this is especially triggering for me, because I remember growing up, me and my mother having the understanding that we're allowing, I'm allowing your father to think he's running everything. I'm allowing him to think this. He, he thinks he's running it, but if I were to actually leave, he will fall apart. So I let him win, let him run us ragged, let him have us walking on eggshells. When I say run us ragged, I mean like have our nerves bad all the time because you don't know which version of him you're going to get. To the point that the garage door raising makes your pressure grow up. So... <laughs> You know, I'm going to allow all of this shit to take place because it makes him feel like he's running everything and we have to make him feel like he's running everything in order for us to be okay, even though we're not okay. <laughs> we're not really okay here. 
we're okay, but we're not really okay. It is amazing how human beings can become comfortable in the most uncomfortable situations. I specifically can remember peaceful moments because I spent so much time walking on eggshell and staying in my just to keep from having some type of negative interaction. So for me, listening to these women tell Alicia to lie and overwork themselves to lie in order to continue to promote a delusion. I just can't take this shit anymore, y'all. <laughs> I just cannot take this shit anymore. I'm not pretending to not make more money than you. I'm not pretending that I'm going to be out, you know, oh, perfect little cook, cleaning, sucking, and why I'm not doing that, y'all. My mom and them, they wanted to keep that shit up. They wanted to like get to themselves so that they can keep whatever, you know, this agreement they've agreed. They they wanted that. I don't want that. I don't want to pretend to make, you know, to, to feel like I need to be making plates every time we go some fun. Like I am done with the lying and the delusions to keep up somebody's fucking ego. I, I can't do it no more, y'all. I did it so much as a child that as an adult, I refuse, y'all. As soon as my daddy was dead, it was like I couldn't do it anymore. I remember being at his funeral, like, why are y'all lying? <laughs> why are y'all lying? I'm tired. I'm tired of the delusion. I'm tired of women lying to themselves to protect men's illusion that they're, they're that guy and they're doing it all and they're in control of everything. You can't control other people. You can't. And even when you try to control them the whole time they're alive, your ass going to die. And then what? You can't control them then because eventually... The indoctrination stops and they're going to be able to naturally come to their own conclusions about shit. Stop taking advice from women in this age range, y'all. Listen to Phaedra. Listen to Phaedra, y'all. Listen to Phaedra. Take money advice from Heavenly. Take coochie advice from Dr. Jackie. But please, do not take any marital, do not take any relationship advice from anybody that will tell you to overwork yourself and lie so that a nigga can believe a fairy tale. What a wife supposed to do. A wife supposed to do whatever the fuck she feel like she want to do. That's what she's supposed to do. And if you don't like it, get yourself another another wife. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Please. A proper wife. A proper wife ain't squeezing children out her coochie only to never be able to be pleasured in that same area. Girl, you have lost your damn mind. You over there not having no orgasms talking about you complaining about his dick size. What that mean? What that mean? You not complaining about dick size. Girl, you how old are you? You just you almost what you 30, what 30 something years old? She been married almost the same amount of time I've been married, y'all. That's why I know she can't tell me nothing. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You can't tell me nothing. You've been married the same amount of time I've been married, ma'am. Going on seven years next month. Okay. You can't tell me nothing either. And I'm telling you right now. If he ain't eating, you ain't nothing. And if it's big, he plowing. But a big one can be either one or two things. It can be, it could be a greatest pleasure and it could be your worst motherfucking nightmare. Big dick don't mean nothing. Big dick don't mean nothing if you don't know what to do with it. Big dick don't mean nothing if it hurts. Yeah. Because a lot of y'all won't even admit to y'all selves that the sex y'all having is not only not pleasuring y'all and not having orgasms, but it's also painful. 
But you think because he got a big dick and, and sometimes he hit a sweet spot when he hit a good angle and you get the, the penetration good feeling, that's good enough. Yeah, that's not good enough, baby. That's not good enough. I've, I've been, I've, I'm 30, I'm 35 years old. I'm about to be 36 years old, y'all. I've been having sex since I was 19 years old. And I haven't even had that many partners. But I've had enough sex to know that a big dick don't mean not a goddamn thing. It does not mean your sex is pleasurable. And I want y'all to stop doing that too. I want y'all to, when these niggas is with these big ones that y'all be so proud of, when they plowing inside of you and that shit hurt, tell them to stop. Tell them to stop. Let me tell y'all. Y'all ever be on Twitter? Y'all ever be on Twitter and watch the, the, the you know, the, the goings on on Twitter? Somehow my Twitter gets suspended, but there's porn all over Twitter. Somehow my Twitter gets suspended though. Okay. Y'all follow my new Twitter. Uh, One of my moderators, please put the new Twitter in the comments, please. Blue Rose Bondi. Okay. That's the new one. Y'all follow me because it, it ain't enough people on there yet. I had 16,000 followers on the last one. Now I, I still, what, I had like 500 or something like that? Please. Because they want you to pay for shit. They want me to pay so that I can authenticate my account. And I'm not paying for this shit. Because I already don't like what's going on over here on X. I'm not paying for this. Okay? Get it out your fucking head. I'll go, I'll go to threads. I'll be over there talking to myself before I sit on Twitter and pay for shit. I know, I know you following Melinda. I follow you back. But on Twitter, if y'all ever pay attention to the porn on there when the dudes is beating the girls' coochies up, there are so many times when you see this. <laughs> y'all know what that mean that mean it hurt that mean it hurt that don't mean it feel good that don't mean it feel good when it feels good we pulling grabbing not pushing you you listen you just gotta have freaky people in your in your shit. If you have freaky people that that you follow, they gonna like stuff. And when they like stuff, then you see. <laughs> That's usually how it happens. Yeah, you you have to let them know. You have to stop them. You have to put, no. That that does not feel good. Stop lying to these niggas because you want them to feel like they told a pussy up. Yeah, nigga. Now I'm sitting here with a you, bitch. You should not have an ice pack on your coochie when it's done. I have the same Instagram. This is the, this is the, uh, hold up. This is the new Twitter. I have the same Instagram at Bondi Blue. Okay. No, look, nobody wants little, but between, I want to say six and eight is your most reasonable. Once you get to nine, you get to a pillow princess dick. Somebody that think all they got to do is lay there. <laughs> and I ain't saying nothing about little. I'm talking about those of you that like them to be so big, but you lying to yourself and to the nigga letting him hurt you so you can act like you you had some some big old peen you're supposed to enjoy sex it's not supposed to be painful and a lot of y'all sit through painful sex for some niggas ego that's what i'm talking about ego the same thing as these women lying to these men about what they're doing around the house for their ego lying going through pain for ego Stop doing that shit. Stop it. I've had enough. <laughs> okay. And that was in my early 20s. I don't I don't go through that. Okay. I have very enjoyable sex. Okay. <laughs> okay. Y'all catch me telling you about it by accident sometimes. Not really by accident. It comes up. But either way, my point still remains. If you are not enjoying being married to a person because they're working your ass to death, 
If you are not enjoying sex because they feel like sex is only supposed to be about them, you are making a fatal mistake in your life. You're ignoring and dishonoring yourself for someone else's illusion. It's not even real, baby. Don't go through all of that unnecessary drama and pain for a lie. And that's what they telling them to do, y'all. And that's what I remember being told to do. And the older I get, the more I realize that is a mistake. <laughs> Tell these niggas the truth and let their feelings be hurt. They need to have their feelings hurt. Yeah, they do. They do. Because y'all protect their feelings and their ego so much that they will hurt you in sex and don't even pay attention. They will not help you around the house and have you doing every fucking thing. Have you woe out. Okay? They will allow you to do everything if you don't say something. And if they don't care enough to help you, if they don't care enough to make sex pleasurable for you, then you need a new nigga. This is for somebody. Somebody needed to hear this today. <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't forget we're going to Thailand June 13th to the 20th, 2024. Go to www.resetbydesignwellness.com for you to sign up to come through and be at this luxury villa with the girls. We are going to relax, relate, release, have a good time. We're going to explore. We're going to be a part of the culture, girl. We're going to go and see what's going on. And we're going to be like, don't touch my yeah. Okay, I hope Thailand got brown skinned people so that y'all don't be looking at us like weirdos because I've seen too many videos of the Asian people looking at black people like they in a damn zoo. Okay, I don't think that will be the experience, but either way, I can't wait. Reset by design wellness.com, baby. We're going down there. Okay, we're going to see what's going on because we deserve wellness and vacations and time off. Okay, and beaches. Deserve all that shit. Okay. Now they have the final dinner. Everyone speaks on the 10 years of trips they've experienced together. Dr. G thanks them for taking in sweet tea and kicking out quiet. No one would still be married without this here group. Simone asked, who has said they wanted a divorce? Why are we asking questions like this? I don't know. We have to have drama. Everyone but Heavenly and Damon with their hands. I'm like, yeah, I could believe it too. I could believe that, that y'all was, you know, stick in there no matter what and never bring up divorce. I, I, I could pretty much guess. Alicia tells us she asked for a divorce. You asked for a divorce? Now, why would you do that being so well trained in such things? She said this man expected her to be up there cooking fucking three-day stews and shit while her feet and ankles were swollen. So it got to the point where she had to threaten to divorce him. And do you know what he said? He said when a man hears a woman wants a divorce, all he hears is you are going to leave Take the kids and half of all my money and possessions as if half of those things don't belong to her. Alicia, I want you to know that if and when you ever decide to break up with him, he's going to make divorcing him hell on earth. So I really hope that you have put that $150,000 somewhere that it can be of use for you. I think you're a very smart woman. So I think when you do divorce him, <laughs> okay um i don't like to speak on nobody relationships like that but i've seen how things work out and eventually you are going to get tired if he continues to think that any woman is supposed to be doing all while he acts the fucking man child girl he's going to force you to divorce him he's going to because he's not going to change he's going to keep keep trying to train you to do all of those things. You're going to get tired eventually. I know you ain't tired yet, but you're going to get tired eventually. And he's going to wait out in the divorce. So I hope that you got your ducks in a row and you got everything you need and you thinking about yourself and you stacking your cash because that nigga going to give you a headache of a time. When he said that about his money 
and his possessions as if you don't also work. That nigga work one job and you over there being a real agent and dentist and a mom and running through the door so you hurry up and cook his food and fix it because he a grown ass man that can't even fix his own food. <laughs> Girl, you gonna get tired. And either he's gonna relent and stop acting like a fucking asshole or he gonna have to get out here back in these streets and see if he can find somebody that's as well trained as you. Okay? But when you discuss having a proper marriage, we know you just trying to save face because you feel embarrassed. But here's the thing, sweetie. You're the only one that told everybody on this cast that you told your husband he wasn't a man because he couldn't fix things around the house like you could. This is the mistake that you make, right? You watch your mom do everything on her own. So you be, you become desperate to find a man that can financially support you. We also lived in that space of lack so much, you're not dumb enough to not take care of yourself. So you have those two things going on at one time. And you're going to give yourself a nervous breakdown, Alicia. All of that laughing and giggling you do, it just makes me feel like you are this close away from a nervous breakdown if your household is really being ran the way you say it's being ran. Because y'all could be lying for the show. Y'all could be. People love to incite anger out of viewership to get on shows and solidify themselves. So if that's what you and your husband are over there doing, fine. But I don't believe that. I believe that you keep letting shit slip out while simultaneously trying to save face in front of everybody like this is how you want to be. But you're telling us that the man is losing money because he don't listen to you. You're telling us that the man is trying to overwork you. And the man is telling us that he's trained you. The man is telling us that he views everything that y'all have as his and not y'all's combined. So that means he's stingy. And that means he thinks he's smarter than you, even though you know he's not smarter than you. So you got both of these things going on at the same time where you're trying to play dumb, but you know you're not. And you keep lying to yourself and telling you that this is the way this shit is supposed to go and that you're going to be happy in this. But you're not really happy because if you were really happy, then you wouldn't be complaining about him the way you are. I thought she was a, um, no, 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 no. She's a dentist. She's a dentist and a real estate agent, isn't she? I heard her say that. That's when she said she's well-trained because she's a dentist and a real estate agent. I thought he was just a regular doctor. He's an oral surgeon. That's why he downplayed her being a dentist. Got you. Okay, so he's an oral surgeon. I did feel like he was more of a doctor, you know, um, on an everyday basis type of thing more than she was. She seemed to have more of like a set schedule like Dr. Heavenly does. He's an oral surgeon. She's a dentist. Got you. Okay, got it. Whatever he does is irrelevant. And I say that because essentially, you know, you're the doctor, you're making probably more money than her in that in that arena, which is why her ass is over here working two, two jobs, two certificated jobs. <laughs> But in the household acting like she is taking from you in some way. And you think that way. You got one job. She got two. She's having children and, and waiting on you hand and foot. And you think everything y'all have is yours. Y'all. Uh, <laughs> okay, Alicia, baby. Good luck. Good luck. When Dr. Heavenly said that Damon thinks the same way. I was just like, yeah, we know Damon thinks the same way. That's why he doesn't say anything. Um, and that's also why you put him on front street a lot because you're being passive aggressive. That's what I think, y'all. I think that as much as Heavenly talks this this shit, Heavenly works. Heavenly is not the, you know, not an adamant cook or anything. We see her cook spaghetti a few times, but we all know that she will order the food and she will pay somebody to come and do this. Her job is to make money. Her job is to make sure they have several uh, streams of income. So whatever the fuck is going on between Heaven and Damon, it's not going on between Alicia and Kima. So it's very weird that she said that's the couple that she, you know, it almost seemed like 
girl, what what are you and Damon going through right now? Because it almost because y'all, I've noticed that she does this. I think she intentionally brings up how misogynist how misogynistic he is acts like she's going along with it but really she's pointing out how stupid he sounds sometimes that's what i think she's really saying because heavenly is very smart and she would never outwardly disrespect damon but she would throw things out there that make him look good in the eyes of stupid ass men but that make damon feel uncomfortable because he's kind of embarrassed that he feels that way he does he feels that way behind closed doors he says ignorant shit to heavenly behind closed doors but he knows he can't say that shit on tv he knows he cannot uh, uh vocalize that so when heavenly points out kima and 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 how kima will vocalize the shit that damon is too scared to say I didn't feel like that was as much a pat on the back as it was low key shade. <laughs> and Heavenly, you can tell me if I'm wrong, baby. Okay. Cause y'all know Heavenly is my girl. Like in, in real life, I like Heavenly. You know what I'm saying? But I also be clocking Heavenly for doing the duality of sometimes you really feel like, oh, I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to do that. But when we look at your life, that is not what's going on in your life, which makes me think these comments you make are sometimes made to make. Damon realized how dumb he sounds <laughs> in private. Okay. I'm not going to disrespect daddy in, in, in public, but I'm going to make him feel uncomfortable as fuck in this confessional when I let everybody know what he really thinks. No, Damon, you don't want to, you don't want to speak up about being a king. No. Yeah. She's being facetious. Absolutely. Strong sarcasm. <laughs> Strong ass sarcasm game going on here with Dr. Heavenly. Show, show you love. Child, when Damon said he can't even unclasp her necklace sometimes, I said, oh, this nigga slow. <laughs> Oh, okay. This nigga's one of them. I'm smart in one arena, almost as if all my brain power can only be dedicated to one area of life. If it was not for Heavenly Child, where would Damon be? Who knows? <laughs> Who fucking knows? Yeah, no, Dr. Damon gives smart slow. You know what I'm saying? Like in in a one in one aspect of life, he's extremely smart, successful, and astute. But it's almost like his brain power can only be used for that one thing at a time because he can't understand nothing else. All this other shit going on. And it's just like, buddy, buddy, you're going to have to handle that, buddy, because I, I just can't. I, I have to focus on this. Like, I think it's like the real life Steve Urkel and Laura Winslow. Like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's, it's real life Steve Urkel and Laura Winslow, because if he actually has to do anything, it may not happen right. Why not? And he is a damn doctor because a lot of times men are really not as smart as everybody think they are. Everybody tells them they're just smart at one thing. Women are the ones that can multitask and be able to be smart and understand several different things going on at one time. You can handle your household shit. You can handle your kids. You can handle your job. You can handle the investments. You can help him with his business. You can fuck suck and make him believe that he's doing all of these things by himself when really all he does is the one thing. You just make it easy to do the one thing. I promise y'all, there aren't men that are good multitaskers. Most of them just put a, a real good amount of energy towards one or two specific things, and they're good at that. That's why women have to be the ones, oh, creating the home. And it's a natural thing for a lot of us, me, myself, personally. I just like the shit. It calms me. Cleaning up, cooking, you know, making it comfortable in here. You know, designing how our home looks and all of that, and just kind of being like, hey, nigga, put this on the wall. Like, <laughs> what you think about that? You like that? Okay, cool. Put that right there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Essentially, that's naturally how this goes. Just naturally. That's just how, how it just so happened to go, y'all. Okay. 
But that that's why they think that because they think that women, because we can do all of these things, we're supposed to be creating this space for them. Well, no, bitch, create the space for yourself. Yes, yes. Professionally smart, slow and everything else. I, he calls her, he calls her his buddy. He calls his wife buddy. <laughs> Y'all, that don't seem like a like a slow nigga thing. Call calling your wife buddy. I, I, you know what I'm saying. Y'all don't I, I'm saying. Listen, and he was a cute, so he probably, you know, he probably is good in bed. Heavenly might have her one of them. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Lifting bitches up. Y'all talking about them like they got all. I didn't say that. <laughs> I just said niggas can only handle one or two things at a time. Okay. <laughs> is it Charles? Your lunch is ready. <laughs> Uh, and listen, no, there are some men that are good at these things, y'all. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not, that's why I said it just so happened to have been like that with me. Um, but that doesn't mean that men aren't also good at things that are, you know, that require femininity. Um, and please understand men should have feminine aspects. They should be in touch with their feminine side, just as women have to be in touch with their masculine side. We are human beings made up of what masculine and feminine that is shown to us by how we are given physical parents so that should let you understand those are the physical like manifestations of masculine and feminine inside yourself there are traits and energies that are masculine and feminine okay and every human being needs to be able to go between those two to be successful in life period but we live in a system that tells you that feminine is bad and masculine is good. Because anytime a man has any feminine attributes, does anything that is outside of what is hyper masculine, y'all want to call niggas gay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little toxicity going on around here. Um. Girl, yeah, we know about all of Naaman's good shut the fuck up qualities. <laughs> we just finished talking about how, you know, how we know he work and all of that shit. We know. We know. And when you say he don't be in mess, that's not necessarily true. Damon has absolutely been in the shit before. Y'all just act like y'all don't remember. Like the time him and Contessa got into it because he... Contessa was misunderstanding him in my, in my, you know, uh, opinion, but I also don't like the way he acts as if men don't get into discourse. He acts as if when the women get into discourse it's just so childish. And I feel like to other women who are grown and doctors as well and can multitask, nobody wants to hear that shit from you. You can barely handle more than one thing at a time, Dr. Damon. Nobody wants to hear from your slow talking ass about how we are having little girl insignificant ass arguments. But then when it comes to heavenly, that nigga know to shut the fuck up and not really get involved. He's only checked her once or twice on camera. Then told her, when I tell you to shut up, you're supposed to shut up. When I tell you something, you're supposed to listen to me. So yeah, we've seen those moments. He's had moments, but he 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 is hyper vigilant about what he's perceived. So yeah, he he's not gonna give you as much. But please understand the ignorant shit that he says is being said to Heavenly, and that's why Heavenly gets on camera and makes him feel uncomfortable about how much dick sucking she doing and all that. <laughs> when Contessa said she made more money than him, Doctor Heavenly was upset, and so was Damon. Ooh. Damon is part of the reason why Heavenly is the way she is on the show. Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, I remember when he was about to get into it with Mariah's husband, but I felt like he was right. I don't, I ain't really like Mariah's husband. He used to be doing too much to me. <laughs> okay. He used to be doing way too much to me, y'all. But anyway, y'all, um, you know, we, we, we talking too long about this. I'm about to get off of here, but Eugene, 
said that he and Toya had that same situation last year where they felt like they were going to get a divorce. We know that they were going through a hard time after the pandemic. Ever since the pandemic, they were going through a hard time. Um, it, I think it it changed Eugene. I think it it depressed him. It fucked with his head a little bit. Um, seeing all of those dead bodies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that really fucked with Eugene. And when he got home, he could not be, you know, uh, interactive with Toya the way she needed. And that's the issue that people have in relationships all the time, y'all. That's like an up and down thing, especially when you have like, you know, even kill husbands. Like, there are going to be times where you're going to have to be like, hey, nigga, hello, <laughs> are you in there? You know what I'm saying? Because they go through shit and they just shut down, you know? Um, but the threat of divorce was like a rush of cold water, okay? Cecil thanks Heavenly for the time she renewed he and Simone's vows, even though they've been beefing online and all of that, <laughs> you know, for a while now. Damon says, well, you know, not in a while, but ever since they had that issue online, they haven't really been that cool, Simone and Heavenly, because of Heavenly talking about how, you know, uh, Cecil needed to get a job. So Damon says, even though he hates all of the couple's events, it makes their relationship stronger. <laughs> Heavenly um, then goes on the whole Kima and Alicia thing. And, you know, daddy says that men should push themselves to lead. And I just kind of feel like um, I think men should push themselves to be successful in their own right. When you say push themselves to lead, I don't know how I feel about that because I feel like a lot of women are natural mothers and they don't have to push themselves to lead. Heavenly didn't have to push herself to lead. She just naturally leads. Whereas you, somebody that has a hard time speaking to people, you know, with assertiveness, I feel like, I'm, I'm just saying, y'all, I don't know what Damon be having going on, but the way Damon handles himself on the show makes it seem as if he doesn't always want to speak. Or he has a hard time speaking up or just communicating um, in a way that will catch people's attention and will hold their attention. You know what I'm saying? Just something, something there. But it just kind of makes me feel like to lead, um, there are a lot of components in leadership. And I don't believe that just because you are a man, you are a leader or you should be pushing yourself to lead anybody. Um, I think that leaders are normally natural born leaders. I'm a natural born leader. Anybody that's ever went to school with me should be able to tell you that. <laughs> like, especially people that went to middle school with me. I am a natural born leader. Okay. I, I'm nobody, you know, it, it just, it is what it is. Nobody had to like really enforce that. I just was that, you know what I'm saying? And that just continued as I got older. So when I hear him saying he has to force, you know, men should force themselves. I'm just like, should you? Because a lot of y'all can't handle that amount of stress. Leadership requires being able to deal with a lot of different things at one time. And a lot of times that's why men be out here losing their minds and being all angry and out of control of their emotions, because y'all are being required to do shit that a lot of y'all just can't do naturally. A lot of y'all aren't leaders. A lot of y'all can't multitask. A lot of y'all need one simple task being told to y'all to do. And that's what y'all will be good at. A lot of y'all need to be told what to do. It's just, it is what it is. And not even just men. There are women, you know what I'm saying? That need, some people just need to be told what to do. So this is not like a male or female thing all the time. But I think it's weird to assume that men are just natural born leaders. I'm sorry. I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> OK, I see way too many, you know, uh, boys that grow up kind of being quiet and not really leading like that. And young girls that are like at seven, eight, you know, eight years old telling everybody what to do. Y'all want to call them bossy. No, those are your leaders. But y'all tell them to shut up. Be quiet. Be seen and not heard. OK, anyway. That's I think that's one of the reasons why y'all don't have a lot of politicians, because the people that should be politicians, y'all don't want them to be the women, the ones that actually, you know, see what's going on on a human level. You know, not the ones that are being put up there by men like Candace Owens and the rest of them white girls over there in the Republican Party. Y'all are just being postured. Y'all get sit up, battery put in back. Um, but a lot, of, I think at this time in the world. The people that should be politicians, the people that should be running for all of these offices and all of that, I think predominantly those should be women. And because a lot of men and because there are way more men, y'all don't want to see, especially like voting and shit, y'all don't 
white men, way, way more white men. I don't want to see women in that. So that's why women are in these positions and men still run this world, even though everybody keeps trying to act like that's not what's happening because in their household, they're, you know, ran by coochie or something like, I guess, uh, you know, your mama told you what to do. Now you feel like, you know, women leading men and men need to get back power. Like Kima said, right. Even though they dictate who's in power, which is why most of your Congress and your Senate is made up of men, white men to be exact. Anyway, I'm just telling y'all, I'm just, that's why we're not interested. That's why everybody's disinterested and we got to keep voting for the evil, decrepit old white man or the less evil, decrepit old white man. Y'all online talking about who's the oldest. Like, okay, one told you to drink bleach. Let's work from there. Um, oh Lord, like it's a lot of ignorant conversations going on around Trump with black people. And honestly, it just, it's one of the things that partially makes me look at the things white people say about black people, negative things they say about stupid or easily, you know, manipulated by money and shoes and shit. Like it, it's insane that y'all actually showcase that mentality online and, you know, in comments and shit like that. And it's just like, wow, the very things that these people would say about black people that we used to feel like was so derogatory. Y'all are actually like, yeah, Trump gave me a check. He did not give you a check. Congress gave you a check. It took longer for you to get it because he had to put his name on it to make you think he gave you a check. Like, I, I, I don't even want to get into it, but I hate the conversation around Trump right now. Like, I really, really do. It just really showcases how ignorant so many black people are, especially on the Internet. Oh, my God. Like, nobody was in school. Nobody, nobody was in school. Anyway, um, Toya and Eugene go over to Simone and see they talk about having an orgy, blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. This whole situation with Matt Gala that they threw. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, somebody just texted me and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Anyway, okay. Was, Toya doesn't want to pay and give them wine. Okay. So Toya gave wine. I think she should have been able to put up her poster if she gave wine, you know what I'm saying? Like I I'm giving you something you don't have to pay for. Um, why you can't put up my step and repeat, but also Toya, you couldn't pay a thousand dollars to help them put this together. Considering the fact this is a group situation. This is a married to medicine situation. Like, why did you not want to pay and fully be involved? Why are you, are you and Eugene still going through money issues? I hope not at this point. Like you should have a thousand dollars, like all of this shit you have going on. You should have a thousand dollars to just throw at this, to give them the money, put up the wine. Like I I'm trying to understand why you couldn't just do this. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yes. Phaedra donated champagne and paid the money. Um, I do feel like if everybody is supposed to be paying and giving something in order for their businesses to be promoted, then you should have paid as well as gave your wine. I do. I, I do feel like that because that's what everybody else was doing. It'd be different if, if nobody else was doing that and they expected you to do it. But everybody put, put up money. Everybody put up a product and put up their money. So I I just, I don't know. I just kind of feel like per heavenly, she didn't even pay for that wine. It technically was free and they told her Phaedra already had it covered. Oh, so yeah, uh, Toya, this is one of them times where I, I, I can't fuck with you. And Eugene just standing beside you, putting up the step and repeat, saying that she's giving the wine. So she, that's not the point, Eugene. You can't give niggas too much credit. That's not the point, Eugene. The point is everybody else is handling this a certain way. This is the way we want to be handled in order for you to promote your business. If you don't want to do it the way we want to do it, then you can't do it at all. That's that's it. That's it. Now, heavenly needing to get on the microphone and tell everybody about it in real life, totally uncalled for. Medicine life, totally needed in order for the moment to have drama. 
At this point, this is what Heavenly is being paid for. To say this shit out loud in large groups of people that nobody else wants to, to do because they don't want to embarrass themselves. Heavenly doesn't give a fuck. She's not going to give y'all her marriage. She's not going to give y'all her life. So what she will do is show up to work and do whatever is required, no matter if it pisses, you know, Toya off, no matter if it pisses Eugene off. Eugene had to go talk to Damon and Damon had to talk him down so he could stop being mad. So, yeah. Then they left and Quad came. Quad came late. Quad say, I have another event to get to. I said, do you? You had another event to get to, girl? Okay. <laughs> Y'all, Kwai so goddamn fake. Walking up in there. Uh, can I give back? Do you, can I hug your neck? What is this hug your neck shit? Why do y'all say hug your neck? That sounds very violent to me. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Quad, quad. How you felt the need to fake it front? For Dr. G. Like, why do you want to be cool with him? Why do you need to pretend like you're cool with him? Is it because you wanted to show that you can get along with them so that you could be back on the show? That's probably what it was. And then you go over to Simone, but Simone feels like if you really wanted to have a conversation, you to call me on the phone. Don't come to no fucking event trying to have a conversation with me and act like we we can get past this. No, if you want to talk to me, talk to me like a real person. I think that's what Simone was saying to Quad. At this point, Quad, what's not clicking for you, okay? I don't know what's not clicking, but you don't seem to understand. They feel like you're not really their friend in real life and you only fool with them to be on this show. So whenever you try to come on the show, they're going to be looking at you like, bitch, we don't fuck with you. We kicked you off the show. So you show up and do like the fake niceties and kind of repeat the same shit. And I'm just like, is she missing it? Like, what's going on? I wouldn't have called Simone. Well, if you're not going to call her on the phone, don't walk up to her and do, don't show up. You know what I'm saying? If you don't give a fuck, if you don't, this is, y'all, this is just my opinion. If you don't give a fuck enough to have conversations with them off camera so that y'all can get to a better place, don't roll up on me on no fucking show and act like I'm supposed to act like we cool. Simone is is entitled. I will say that Simone is extremely entitled. And I feel like Simone has always been giving quad her ass to kiss. She's all, all you know, always this little girl thinks she's a butt girl. No, you have always thought that y'all were above quad. And I think the fact that y'all have been put on level playing field with quad on this show, almost as if she's more valuable than y'all on this show because of how her personality pops on screen. I think Simone, I think you and Jackie, that was the thing y'all had in common feeling like y'all were better than everybody because y'all were the most successful doctors, right? You get on the show, reality TV, and, and you, you are expected to still have this energy of being at the top. Quad comes on, not a doctor, just a doctor's wife, and her personality makes her, you know, at the forefront on this platform. I do think on some level, you want to be able to sun quad. You want to be able to hold her feet to the fire and little girl her and act like an elder pushing down on her in order to make yourself feel like y'all are on love and playing. Feel like, oh, she, you know, they might like her on this show, but in real life, I'm still above her. Simone has always had that attitude towards quad, if you ask me. Always. They always have looked at Quad like she was some little girl. And that's how they've handled her. And I think that's why she don't fuck with them. For real, for real. That's why, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why it's, at this point, I think Quad ain't fucking with none of them. It's because they, they treated her like shit because they felt like they were above her. And she was trying to really be a friend. And then you look back on certain moments and feel like, man, these hoes ain't never really fuck with me. And so she tried to play them and do this whole, I'm going to just show up on a show, but I don't really fuck with y'all like that in real life thing. And it's not working on this show because this is not Real Housewives. That would have worked on Real Housewives. That's not going to work on this show. They've already set the president with how they handled the situation with Mariah. And the president is, if we don't fuck with you, we can ice you out. 
Yeah. Funky said that Mariah brought her on as the Tammy, but she became a fan favorite in It Girl. Yeah, that's what happened. And that's why Mariah didn't like her. Mariah had put the battery in everybody's back before Quad even met them that Quad was her little project, her little fixer-upper project. And as soon as she surpassed her in any way, shape, or form, she had a problem. Y'all can't tell me no different about Miss Mariah, okay? She wanted to be Queen Bee so bad, and they let her know, because I think when she left it, she left for like a minute off the show. Trying to, you know, oh, they they need me. They didn't. <laughs> and then she came back and sat her ass in the back and just chilled and was there until, you know, that whole situation with her breaking a glass. And then, you know, after that, you know, just kind of went downhill after that. But yeah, um, Simone was quads OBGYN like she sweet tea. Simone is more Dr. G's friend. Exactly. I agree with you. I agree with you there. Let me read some of these super chats before. I get to these tweets. California cutie. Hey, Melinda girl. Can't wait to hear what happened on Twitter. Yes, we're about to get into it. Hot wing lover. Thank you for the super chat. Tap in to the highest voice registry. Like you said, Portia does. She absolutely does. Um, Lady Lisa, thank you for the super chats. Uh, dang, dang shame when Kima said he needed a nanny to feed his child. Oh, God. Oh, God. The boys out here. <laughs> Where are their lives? Definitely not being taught how to take care of no goddamn family. Y'all need to give these little niggas baby dolls. Y'all don't want to give them baby dolls. Y'all think that's gay. Like they not going to have to grow up and take care of children. <laughs> the dolls are to make them be able to take care of children. And y'all don't want the boys to have dolls because that makes them gay. How? When a child, let's, let's not even go there. Just <laughs> it leads to the children. The fucking of the women leads to the children more often than not. Okay. Y'all should have been giving these niggas baby dolls. Anyway, so this is the shit that happened on Twitter. Okay, Dr. Heavenly. I was on Twitter, so I was watching her, you know, misspell pedophile and shit. But I was just like, oh my God, what's going on? So Dr. G is not respected in the community. That's real talk. Child Heavenly taking all her anger out on Dr. G. Not a piezo file in a pinky size. Ooh, <laughs> not hashtag team daddy. That's the thing. Um, I was super patient. Damn sure will be a counter. Oh, oh Lord. If he not really a pedo, she playing with that man livelihood. She do way too effing much. F them. They are playing with mine. Don't throw rocks. Girl, what? Heavenly, what is going on? Woo, she better have proof to back that allegation up. I hope they have proof of their allegation. What are they alleging? T struck a nerve with Heavenly. That's not being respected. Oh, yeah, they said that Heavenly, Sweet T said that Heavenly wasn't real, well respected in the, um, in the doctor community, right? Um, That's what it was. Sure did. She has nothing to lose, but her husband does. Wow, Heavenly, it's slow down dirty. Why she keep coming for the men, but say the men got to stay out of women's business when they respond? Dr. G got to fade her husband now. Nah, they want to be in it, so let's do it. Girl, what do the heart emojis have to do with anything? I'm sorry. At the beginning of the season, she said she invited Dr. G back and insisted because they were friends. Now he's not respected. I wish you guys would read. I hope they have proof of their allegations. Girl, let me go over to Twitter. Let me, hold up. Let me see if I can go over to Twitter, girl. <laughs> hold up, y'all. Because that's not all of it. And I want all of it. I want all of it. But why she had to call that man a, a, a pedo? What, what is this? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Child, why they had Tisha Campbell in the studio? Hold up. Y'all like the video while I try to find the rest of these tweets. Because I thought that was all of them. But it's not. Like the video. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it's been so much shit going on, y'all. It's been so much shit going on. Y'all know we got a Bondi Blue show, right? We got a Bondi Blue show today at 2.30, so in an hour. So we, we're not going to be up here much longer, girl. I'm about to get through this and get out. And we're going we gonna to be back. We're going to be talking about Portia and Simon because there's some new news on them. We're going to be talking about the, uh, the the what is it, Risa Tisa? We're going to be talking about that shit. <laughs> 
Um, and we're gonna be talking about Wendy. We're gonna be talking about Mia Copa. I'm gonna try to get through those things as quickly as possible. Girl, get your snacks. Okay. <laughs> Dominique, thank you for being a member for 13 months. This is the messy. Jamie always love you, buddy. Yes. Okay, shout out to my girl, Jamie. All right, so this is where it all started. Man, sweet T. She doesn't have anything. Her, she doesn't have anything to come for, but her man does. Leave me alone. I will let have. Okay? Dr. G is not respected in the community, and that's real talk. Okay? Original hashtag. Dr. G is not respected in the community. That's real talk. The edited hashtag. So she took that out. Dr. Daddy must have told her to take that out. Now, how does Sweet T know that Dr. Heavily isn't respected in the medical community when you just got there? Oh, because that's what Sweet T, it was tacky and ghetto to announce that as a, at a medical gala. This is why she isn't respected in the medical community. I had embarrassment from dentist the menace oh that was a read <laughs> she called her dentist the menace oh my god oh my doctor she is not respected in the community oh zox heavenly you lost all your cool girl oh my god you lost all your cool girl oh my god I doubt he sues her. He has a history of dating significantly younger women. He don't want them looking deeper. Have her retract it and leave it be. That's good advice. That's good advice because Dr. G does like them young and dumb and full of, mm, baby, let me tell you something, Heavenly. She absolutely hit a nerve on you because unless you have proof of that man being with some little girl, that was not cool for you to post that. That was not cool. I'm, I'm going to have to tell you, girl, that's some messy, fucked up shit for you to say that that man was a pedophile um, all up on the internet, okay? And we glad you got, you know, Twitter X plus or whatever the pay subscription of Twitter is. We glad you got that so that you can edit your tweets because otherwise, girl, you know, you can't edit your tweet if you ain't paying for Twitter. The folks already looking into his history. She retracted last night on her live. Okay, she retracted it. That's good. You got to stop losing your shit when people play like you play. Like, you got to be able to take it if you're going to dish it, Dr. Heavenly. Come on now. Saying you not respect it. That don't mean you call the man the pedophile, girl. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Heavenly. Yeah, Heavenly lost her cool. Heavenly completely lost her mother in mind on that one i'ma just going because it wasn't like it was a cute little read she gave you a cute little read that was tacky in real life yes in real life that was tacky in real life you should never get on the mic and talk about somebody didn't pay for some shit. That's never the time or the place if you're really trying to be respected and classy based. You don't bring up money like no thirsty broke bitch. We know you're not broke. So for you to be up here bringing up who paying for what is giving thirsty broke bitch. It's not giving class, girl. It's not. So we mad that you did that, Dr. Heavenly. Why you did that, girl? Get yourself under control. Calling that man no damn pedophile. That's messed up. Oh, my God. And honestly, nobody even really needed to respond to you. Because you hung yourself up with that one. Like, that was so unnecessary. You could have said a whole bunch of other things about him. You swear up and down, you know all his tea because the quad spray some real tea. Spray some real tea. Because saying that shit, I just feel like unless you know for a fact that that's real, that's not true. I don't give a fuck. I know, I know what she meant when she said it because he always messing with some girl so young. But yeah, no, you don't, you don't tweet that shit. You don't put that out into the atmosphere when that's not true. Because fucking with kids is not the same thing as fucking with younger girls. It's it's really not. Sweet T is still 30 something years old. That's not the same thing. So if you're gonna dish it heavily, you're gonna need to be able to take it a little bit better than that. You lost your fucking cool. Somebody said you wasn't well respected. I don't know why you think you're gonna be able to stay well respected in any arena when you handle shit the way you do. I mean, I'ma just, you know, <laughs> like sometimes this like this is a prime example. You doing that is a prime example why somebody may not respect you going forward because you always gotta take it way too goddamn far. Yeah. Get that, get that, get, 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 get that together. 
get that together, Dr. Heavenly, if you're going to be out here trying to gather people, okay? Um, But she was the best dressed. She was the best dressed at the at the reunion. Okay, shout out to Alexander Rogers. She was the best dressed. This is nice. I like this. It's giving Garden of Eden. Y'all, let me tell y'all, I think sitting down, this is going to look great. But why the dress look like part of it is unhemmed and the other half is stuck in her pantyhose. I don't know. But Dr. Simone, titty up. You look good, girl. You look good. Oh, come on, Dr. Jackie. Oh, my God. Dr. Jackie, this is cute, Dr. Jackie. You look good, girl. This is really, I love this. Oh, I love the stockings. I love the shoes. It's giving money. The hair is really nice. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm here for all of this, doctor. Yes, Dr. Jackie, you needed to come through with something, and we hope you come through with some, you know, genuine apologies and some, you know, making sense of things when you get on a reunion, because it looks ain't going to be enough but you look good you do um shit i might say you look better than uh dr heavily if it wasn't for the fact that i feel like you know your body's so small and your head so big i can't really give it to you toya toya i don't like it i'm sorry y'all first of all she's standing real weird um i feel like it almost makes her look like she's not as fine as she is. I think it's the way she's standing. I don't like this. I don't like this, Toya. Oh, I think you're going to look better on camera sitting because a lot of times these looks and pictures do not do them justice. Um, But yeah, Toya, I, I don't, and I damn sure don't like them shoes. I'm sorry, Toya. I don't like nothing about this. I don't like the dress. Um, I don't know how I make your big booty ass look like, you know, you ain't got no ass. I don't know how, like, I don't know how, but the way her, like, yeah, that's the way she's standing. I don't, I don't like the pose. I don't, I don't like the shoes. I think the dress would look better if she was posed differently. Um, quad baby, are you okay? Quad, are you okay? Are you all right? Why? Girl, you know, I usually, you know, <laughs> girl, it's giving tacky from head to toe. It's giving tacky from head to toe. The hair is tacky. The dress is tacky. So, oh my God. Like, I just, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. You could have done so much back quad. Girl, I'm just so taken how, how terrible this looks. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't like that hair. And this dress, it, it's just, it does nothing for her shape. The way it, it looks like a mini in front, like, uh, 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 I don't even like that print. Ah, uh, yeah, no, 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 I, I thought it was just me. What's wrong with it? It's ugly. The print to me is ugly. The, the way the bows are placed with no differentiation so you can barely see them. It just looks like a whole bunch of fabric sewn together and placed on her body. I don't like the place of the cutout. And the hair, I just don't like that color blonde. It, it's, it's harsh. That color blonde and, and it's updo like this. What the fuck? It's harsh. It's harsh, y'all. I'm sorry. The hair color is harsh. The lip liner is harsh. And I don't like this busy ass cheap looking Forever 21 she inside print. And y'all know I'm a she in girl now. Is that specific enough? Yeah. Yeah, Portia. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Portia. <laughs> Phaedra. Yeah, Phaedra. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you pose. Phaedra look good. Phaedra looks real good. I like this. This is good, Phaedra. This is real good, girl. 
You're giving Earth a kid. Arr, I like it. Sweet tea, whose suggestion was it for this drop waist? Yeah, y'all, I'm sorry. No, it's giving real matronly. It's giving mother of the bride. It's giving mother of the bride. You are the bride. Why are you mother of the bride? Who is styling you? Did you style yourself? Why Why does it look like it's not properly fitted to your height? I just, it's so much wrong. It's just, it's just so much wrong. Oh, yes, Alicia. I wish I liked you more. The pose. The boob, the face, the hair, the floral. I, I love her dress. I think she looks amazing. I wish I liked her more. She looks good. She looks really good. All right, then, y'all. That's all I got for y'all for now. Because I'll be back at 2.30, girl. And we'll be getting into some gossip topics. Okay? So make sure y'all come back. Like the video. Subscribe to my channel. Support your girl. And I'll see y'all in a minute.